What's poppin', y'all? It's your boy DeAndre. We back at the Squid Games Aftermath podcast, and I have a special guest, a beautiful young lady, goes by the name of Bree Dawson, player 343. What's poppin', Bree? What's going on with you today? What up, what up? Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Let's let's spill some tea. Oh, it's time. It's time. Okay, she wants to spill the tea already. She's getting into it quick. Everybody else is kind of Everybody else is just slowly getting into it. You said, all right, I got the teapot ready. Let's go. Come on, let's sit down. All right, well, we can answer any any other questions first, but tea will be spilled for sure. Okay, okay. Y'all heard it first, right? Ten seconds into it. You already know what you're going to get. So you might as well sit down, you know, get a nice cold beverage, pop your feet up, and, you know, hear what this woman got to say. But first, before we get into that, can you tell me why you decided to apply for Squid Games The Challenge? Yeah, I grew up literally binge watching a reality TV show. I remember when I was little, my mom would be watching her show, her little reality TV shows, and she'd be like, all right, it's time for bed. And I'd be like, can I stay up? And the only way I could stay up is if I watched my sh- if I watched the reality TV shows with her. So I'd like be giving her like back massages on the commercials just so I could stay up and watch. And then ever since then, I was hooked on reality TV. And then when I saw that Squid Game came out, I was like, this is the perfect opportunity. And for four and a half million dollars, let's do it. So that really is what made me apply. And that's life changing money. So I was all for it. She was all for it. And so when you, um, so do you, you watched the show before you applied, right? Yeah. I watched it like four times. Oh, dang. She was studying. She had a notepad and pen out. Yeah. I was trying to study like people's strategies and stuff and see how people made it in the game and even bought some stuff to like practice, uh, in the game. So I mean, half of that never even came into play in the real game, so it's fine. You forgot, you forgot to buy battle shit. I know. <laughs> too soon, too soon. Literally, way too soon. Oh, she she bought everything except the one game she had to actually, you know, prep for. Right. But we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, so you apply for the show, you, you know, you, mm-hmm. you watch it out of TV and whatnot. Uh, so months go by, yada yada. You get the call, you're accepted, and it's the day, you know, the night before you're packing, getting ready to go. What's kind of going through your mind? Oh, my God. I'm so scared out of my mind. Like, it was – I've never been out of the country before, so even just being flown to London to film was so cool. Um, I was, like, running around, getting ready, making sure I had everything. And I was even making the little, like, Dalgona cookies right before my flight came, literally like an hour before the car came to pick me up. And – I was struggling trying to make them, but I was like, I need to practice at least one before I go on the show. And I I did one right before, and then the car picked me up. And the whole time I was like, what is my life? I'm like, this all feels so surreal. And literally as soon as I hopped on that flight, I was like, oh my God, like the game, I feel like is already starting. So I was really excited, but also nervous because I had no idea what to expect. Yeah, no, definitely. It felt like the game started when she got on the plane and you was gone. I mean, even the car picking you up was like, oh, snap. Yeah. Like, it's happening. Yeah. They got my name on the car. Everything. <laughs> it was crazy, too. I, I got picked up in like a nice like Mercedes. I was like, oh, they got money. So yeah, I know. I was shocked. I thought, you know, I thought I was going to have to get myself to the airport initially. But yeah, they spoiled us a little bit. Yeah. So you get you get to film and location and you know you do the quarantine and whatnot and then that's finished up and it's time the morning of okay they say we're getting ready to go to the first game take me back to when you're waking up and you're getting on the bus what's kind of going through your head at this point oh my gosh i remember just waking up first of all they were supposed to give us a like wake up calls and i never got a wake up call so I actually woke up before, like 10 minutes before we were supposed to be down. And I still got no call. So I just walked down there and I'm like, okay, I'm like, I guess I'm going to walk down here because no one woke me up. So that was the first thing. So I was already freaking out because I'm like, did they forget about me? Like, do they not want me in the game? Like, I don't know. All thoughts were like running through my head. I was really paranoid. But then when I got downstairs and we saw everyone about to get onto the bus, I'm like examining people left and right. I saw we weren't supposed to talk before the game, but I mean, everyone else was talking. So I was like kind of examining like who was talking to who i was like sizing people up and down like oh they look cool like i could i could work with them i'd be friends with them so i was just really like taught like sizing people up and just seeing like how people interacted with each other and like what i should be aware of when entering the game so i feel like the game started even before the actual game started honestly 
Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. I mean, yeah, just in the hotel, just, you know, I mean, you only saw people when you're going to get food, but definitely yeah. that was only a human interaction. And, you know, it was it was game on from the jump. Yeah. So when you walk in to Red Light, Green Light Arena, what's your first thing that comes? What's like your first initial thoughts when you walk in, you see the doll, you see everything? Because you could kind of, you knew what it was going in there because you could see it from a distance from the tents. But right, seeing everything and you're there and you feel the ground, you feel the atmosphere. What's going through your head then? Oh, my gosh. Well, first, when we walked in, I was immediately freezing. I'm anemic, so I get cold so easily. So stepping into that little airport hangar, I was already like, oh God, this is going to be a long ride. And, but it was so surreal. It kind of felt like I used to cheer. I cheered for like 10 years and it felt like I was getting ready to go, like step onto the mat for like a cheer competition. Like your adrenaline's running. And I just kept thinking like, I just need to get through this game. I'm like, I cannot go home during red light, green light. I flew all the way to London. Like that's going to be so embarrassing if I just go home after one game, like I need to get through it. So I was like practicing my stances and like my walks and a, a couple people were all just like walking in lines and like trying to practice um, how we were going to stop and stuff. So I was just like, I was already practicing before we started just because I was so nervous and I didn't want to slip up. But once the game started, everything that I had strategy wise, like went out the window because the first song I was shaking. Literally, I bent my knee the wrong way and I had to hold it for like 15 minutes and my legs literally shaking like this. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I, I can't do this again. So I had to re-figure out my strategy, but it was it was a crazy game for sure. So what was your initial strategy? So my initial strategy was at first, because we didn't really know, we got to practice like uh, at first one little quick round of how this how the song's gonna go. Um, so I was like, okay, I can like sprint and then just stop in like whatever position. But that first position that I did, I just bent my knee at the wrong angle and my leg was shaking the whole time. So I was like, okay, I can't do that anymore. So my, I changed my strategy to just keeping my hands in my pant pockets. And then I just, I kind of did like the old man strategy from the original show. I just like ran straight and then I would just stop and I had my hands in my pockets the whole time. Cause I was, I was seeing people like stop like this and this and they were getting caught in the weirdest positions. I'm like, why are your hands like up in the air like that? Like put them in your pocket because you had to hold it for such a long time and it was cold and I'm just like, you guys, what are you doing? I, I wanted to help people out, but also I'm like, okay, yeah, you keep doing that so you can get out and have a better chance of winning. But people are doing the craziest things, including you. Yeah. I, me? What you mean yeah. me? I saw you flop on, you were doing your little like plank position on the ground. You were like in front of me half the time. I, that's how I remember you. I was just like, oh, I thought you were going to get out, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Why do you think I was going to get out? Because you're, you were like running and then you would like lay down. Wasn't that your strategy? You would like get up and down. No. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, the song's going to get cut short one time. And I was like, oh man, like this guy's going to get out. But you pulled it off. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad, you know, you was behind me giving me that, you know, energy that I needed to keep propelling. So I was doing a little front dive and whatnot. It hurt sometimes. I remember uh, I posted it actually Instagram today where my hands were like, flat behind me and that was well I didn't I, I forgot I even did that because I was trying to like lay on my arm every time after yeah. that because my hands just got you just get a little uncomfortable you know you got to adjust slightly but you can't adjust at all and yeah. I completely forgot I did that so I was like God, my <laughs> head is like tired my face is on this cold ass ground so mm -hmm. everything was just frozen and I mean I couldn't I couldn't stand up that was the thing. My, yeah. I knew my legs was going to start shaking. I didn't want to, you know, get out that way. I knew I didn't want to fidget at all because it looked like any slight movement, it was out. So People were getting popped left and I right. Think, yeah, I think the only thing they let shake slide was if you were uh, quivering. Yeah. Because it, you know your bodies can't help doing that. You can't get somebody up by quivering. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was mean, that your I, initial I, strategy, or did you have a different strategy no, going no. in? <laughs> no, no. My strategy was just to like side shuffle the whole way because I practiced a few times like, oh, okay, like easy, good. Yeah. Nah, my back <laughs> almost went out. I thought I was going to be the first one out of the game. Yeah, it was so bad. So it was, yeah, after that, my strategy was like sit down. Yeah, I was like yeah. sit down every time because my legs won't I, be able to hold me up. I wanted to, but I didn't trust myself that I'd be able to get back up after. So I'm like, all right, we're just standing all the way. <laughs> hey, look, I praise all y'all that stood the whole way. I just 
felt like I was going to fidget or I was, my legs were just going to give and something like that. So it was just not happening for me, but mm -hmm. you keep making, so you get, you got your strategy or your new strategy mm -hmm. is to just kind of just make it, you know, and by any means necessary. The old mm -hmm. one went out the window, the new one's just like, all right, we're getting it. So you move it down, moving down, moving down. And you're almost to the end. What's kind of going through your mind after like, after you're, you know, the, at the point where you're almost past the line? Yeah, I remember I was like probably like 10 yards away from the finish line. And I think we crossed at the same time. I'm pretty sure. Um, was it the I group remember... that was celebrating heavily on the right side? Yes, yes. Okay, so it I did like not go on the right side and celebrate. I was the third group that crossed. And I- Okay, I you were like... with me then, you were with me. Yeah, and I just remember I'm like looking like out of the side of my eyes and I see Taylor 389 and I was like, I'm like, I need to cross with her. And I was just in so much pain. And I was like, I cannot do another round. I was like, this, it's so cold. My body hurts. I have to pee. Like, I just need to get out of here. So even though I was still kind of far away, I was like, I need to just die for it. And if I don't make it, then whatever, I just couldn't do another round. So I just remember like once that song came again, I sprinted and then I literally ate shit across the finish line. And I just like got up and I like pulled a boob muscle. I'm like, oh, my boob. But I was like, yeah, I made it. So it was good at the end of the day. But I was so scared. I didn't think I was going to make it. But I literally, as two seconds before the song stopped, I crossed it. And I was like, oh, thank God, because I was scared. She came through in the clutch. OK, yeah. she took care of business. Yeah, because I'm like, if I got out, Right as I was crossing the finish line, I would have cried probably. So I'm just happy that I made it through. We, we were Gucci. Hey, yeah, we Gucci. We Louis, Vuitton, we everything, you know? That's right. So congratulations, player 343 makes it past red light, green light. She gets, she eliminates half the competition. No sweat on her back. Well, maybe a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that's finished up we eventually head into the dorms. So when it's when you head into the dorms and you kind of see the setup, what's kind of, what are you thinking right now? I was like, oh my God, this is so legit. And honestly, I kept, I'm like, this literally looks like prison. Like we, we technically were in like a prison environment. Like there was no outside, there was no technology, anything. So I'm like, oh, we're just in like a very large prison cell. Um, but it, I mean, it was really cool too. Cause I'm like, whoa, like I'm actually here and we're doing it. And I was just like, we all got to like tour around. I was looking up and down the bunks. It was fun going into the bathrooms and showers. I was like, oh, I was like, this is so cool. So I gave myself like a little tour and I, then I was just like, what do we do the rest of the time that we're here? And I was like, there is nothing to do except for just talk to each other. So, um, that's when I just started getting to know as many people as possible. So if you're in there, that was kind of your strategy was, well, the, the, uh, why am I mixing my words right now? The social part of it mm -hmm. was just to try and meet as many people as possible. Or were you trying to find a small group to go in and kind of like ride with them as far as you could? Yeah, I feel like my initial strategy going in was to talk to as many people as possible. But, and I, I did that for the most part. I talked to a lot of people, but I felt like there were already alliances forming as soon as we even got into the dorm. So I feel like people already had their cliques. And I mean, if you would talk to people, they would be friendly and stuff. But I feel like it was kind of hard to get people to, you know, want to join your group because they were already with a bunch of other people. So, I mean, I just talked to everyone and got to know them. But yeah, I mean, people already had their little alliances. So I'm like, this is going to be harder than I thought socially wise, honestly. So um, I just had to find a squad that, I could rock with and just keep having a good social game and just chat to everyone because I feel like if you didn't talk to anyone you were seen as a threat or if you were friends with too many people you were seen as a threat so it's just kind of finding that like right balance yeah no definitely I mean definitely attest to that I kind of I'm not really I wasn't trying to find two alliances I was just trying to be cool with everyone everyone knows who I am just like at a mean so it's like you don't know who I am so that's not my end-all be-all but right. Getting in groups, I think, was kind of putting a target on your back in general, just because people saw you and with people, and then they might have became their own assumptions. And so I was trying to make make my close friends and whatnot, but also just introduce myself to everyone and kind of just see where things take me. Because I wasn't thinking about alliances, to be honest. It was just yeah. it was too early. It was just not in my brain at that point. Mm -hmm. But we move on to our. We'll just move on a little bit to our first, well, first second game. Delgana, mm -hmm. 
And so you walk in the room, you see the lines popping up. What, 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 what's your, why do you pick the line that you pick? I don't know. I'm a spiritual girly. I, I have all these feelings. And as soon as I walked in, I, my intuition was just like line one, like immediately. And so I just went, I didn't even think twice. I didn't look at any of the other lines. I just went to line one. Cause I just knew in my feeling, I'm like line one's going to be circle. And I don't know, my, my gut was just helping me out in that moment. And so when we were watching everything play out on the screen, I was just like, shitting myself. I was like, this is scary. I'm like, I hope I get this circle. But so yeah, the whole time I was like, please just let it be circle. But I just kept like a positive mindset. I'm like, no, I'm like line one is circle. And I was just kind of speaking it into existence. So yeah, I just kept saying line one circle and then it ended up being circle. It did end up being circle. Uh, you know, it just turned out to have to be that way. It wasn't really because line one, I will say it was no. just the line leader. <laughs> well, this was this was my thing. I mean, this was all of line one's thing. We were like, if, cause based on the wall, line one, like circle was line one, line two was triangle. So we were like, let's just go in that order. We already picked our lines. And we were like, that's the most fair way. Cause people kept getting out. Unfortunately, you, uh, well, people keep getting out. So you think we're like, that was the most fair way to go about things, huh? I think so. We already picked the lines and we we're like, Hey, it's already in order. People keep getting out. No one can, no offense, the race didn't work out. Love you, but I'm like, let's just do it this way. So I don't know. That was that was my thought process. But I mean, I'm sure if I was in line four and I had umbrella, I would have been like, no. I was like, I'm sure it would go a different way, just because I had line one. I wanted to go with circle. Yeah, I mean, there's different perspectives. Line one, especially like very contrasting ideas with line one and line four, especially. Uh, you know, just. Because one line might seem, well, this is the order we go in. This is the order that's only the fairest way, you know? But yeah. line people in line four are saying, well, that's not fair. They're allowing us to choose. So why should we just be subjected yeah. to this because of what line we pick? So there's two contrasting. I wouldn't say there's a right and a wrong in that situation. It just kind of depends on where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, I'm making a video about the whole thing later to post on my Instagram to get down to the details of things because it was a lot a little choppy for my take. So I need to smooth it out a little bit for the people back home but um Fair. no I, I i get it i get it so i don't blame anybody for thinking what they were thinking yeah so we get in there you get circle congrats mm -hmm. and yeah. so you walk in there you see mark he you know everyone lifts him mark. up and like good job whatnot the current circle king mm -hmm. and when you start you get your shape and you get it <laughs> out uh how what's your strategy with the delgada cookie um before we even started this just sounds really gross but i was like collecting all the saliva in my mouth already and i was like by the time the timer starts i was just spit on the cookie and that was my thing i just literally held it in the tin and i just spit and i'm not even kidding i wish they showed it because i finished my cookie in literally like 45 seconds and it was so easy to me and i think because i just spit right into the tin and also circle was an easier shape but I, I finished it really fast and I was like, man, I wish they showed that. But yeah, it, I literally just spin it, carved it out and it just popped right out. I was like, that was a little too easy. But I think that was the better strategy rather than seeing people like hold it up and lick it because it was just taking longer to dissolve. So I think just collecting that saliva just really helped me out in the beginning. So when you spit in there, did you spit like on the, uh, the in sealed se 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 seams of the cookie or did you just spit all over the cookie and just yeah, carve it? I, I spit all around like just the circle like the outline of it and i was like all right i was like let's just see how it goes and literally i popped my pin in and it just popped out and i was like oh i was like this, this was nice so wow. it worked out, easy yeah. does it i know Went from the hardest challenge to the easiest challenge just like that yeah that was my favorite challenge hands down i was like that was a little too easy <laughs> I didn't have any complaints. I was like, when I handed it my cookie, my hands was like shaking. I was like, oh my God, I made it. But yeah, that was pretty much it. So I was also told earlier that when you did your shape, they specifically said that if you, you if you break the cookie while it's still in the pen, you'll be out. If you break the cookie on your way from inside the playground to outside to show it to the adjudicators, you would also be out. So mm -hmm. were you like thinking about that at all? Oh, yeah. I mean, luckily, I felt like my shape wasn't the hardest. So I didn't I wasn't really worried about breaking it. I just like held it in the middle. And I was like, no, no, no. I was holding it like this, like, please give me more food kind of thing. And I was like, <laughs> like this and I showed them and then they like took a picture of it. 
and I was good. But I mean, if I had something like Umbrella or Star, I probably would have been a little more careful. But yeah, I mean, I was just hoping on my way out. I was like, don't break. But I, I didn't really feel like it was going to. So I, I wasn't really worried about it. Okay, okay. Well, she's flying through this challenge, man. Y'all, she finishes challenge number two. Three, four, three is the favorite to win it all at this point. That's right. She is at the top of the leaderboard. <laughs> she finished first in the cookie. Yeah, I wish they showed that. And then Taylor389, she finished in like 20 seconds. I was like, it was like her, Ashley, and then me. We all finished like top three. And I'm like, they should have shown that. And then afterwards, when we got back into the dorms, we had like a little twerk party. I'm like, they should have showed all this, like missed opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> we were literally in the bathroom just having a twerk party. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, they did. They they should. I wish I would have saw more funny moments. I know they're. I think they're trying to keep it more serious. I'd say and then yeah. add like hints of funny moments. But I think I even said I'm like, like I think there's more comedic things going on here than anything. So yeah. I think you know that's just my opinion. I mean, I they can do what they want to do, but mm -hmm. there's just too much funny stuff that went on that was just like very subtle that was hilarious I think but i hard. digress yeah i feel like it's hard because we were being filmed 24 7 all the every single day so it's hard to kind you know kind of cut those moments in but I'm like come on sprinkle sprinkle a little stuff in but it's fine it's fine you know you weren't in the game plan coach yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well we move on from dalgana and then we get back to the dorm so then we see this phone ringing and this phone's ringing when nine eight picks it up and you know he gets a treat mm -hmm. and then you get some other treats are you thinking about picking up this phone hell no i i knew that something would go wrong if he picked it up i mean at first i didn't know he was going to get a treat but i just didn't think twice about it because i'm like this is too suspicious i'm like why are they leaving a phone in here i'm like it's so easy like this game is all about luck and i was like you never know like what your fate is if you pick that up. So I was, when I saw 198 pick it up, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, he can pick it up. Cause you know, a lot of people didn't really like him in the game. So when he picked it up, I was like, all right, if he gets eliminated, then that's on him. But then when I saw them bring out the burger and fries, that's when I attacked and I was, I got some fries. I was so hungry. <laughs> yeah, we saw you in there. Yeah, not my, not my finest moment for sure. But they starved us in there. We were hungry. <laughs> And those fries were the best fries I ever had in my life, honestly. I can only imagine. I mean, no sugar or salt or anything. Like, no I mean, I could imagine. Shit, I was, I saw it. But, yeah, uh, but yeah, I didn't think about picking up that phone at all. Okay, so she's like, I'm staying in the back this time. Yeah. Got it, got it. So that happens. One nine eight goes home. Everyone's rejoicing and laughing. So then we move on to the next day. Everyone goes to sleep. We wake up. And it's time for challenge number three. They start cranking them out real quick now. There's no more two or three days to kind of kick your feet up. It's time to get down to it because they got a schedule to keep. Mm-hmm. They weren't playing. So it's time to get in a line. You walk in the white room. And mm -hmm. so how do you decide which line you're getting into? Yeah, I remember in the dorms, I was really close with Brad um, and he was, we were always going, I forget his player number, but we were always um, like discussing strategy and stuff. And even before we played the game, we all thought we were going to play tug of war going into this game. So um, before in the dorms, Brad was like, teach me all the strategy. He's like, all right, tuck it under your arm. Then you're going to hold it like this and this. And I was like, Ooh, I was like, I want Brad on my team. And he was just one of my friends in the game too. So I was like, you know what? I was like, I'd love to have him on my team. Um, I trust him. He's really smart. So I was like, wherever he goes, I'm going to go. And I think we were already, when we got into the room, me and Brad were like close to each other and he just stood in line three. And I was like, Oh, I'm gonna go right behind you. And then I saw some of my other friends like Charlie and Rob, they were, they got in line two and then Taylor and Ashley. And I was like, Oh, I was like, we have a solid line. I'm like, these are all strong people. I'm like, I feel like we have a good chance of winning tug of war. And then that's, that's how I initially, initially picked that line. Cause I was just like, I saw Brad and I was like, I want to be with Brad cause he's smart and he knows what he's doing. Nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, viable strategy. Don't blame you in the least bit for that. But when they pull the balls out and they pull out team one versus team three, team one seems a little cocky. Are you kind of afraid of team one at this point? Because they say, oh, we we got them. This is going to be cake. We're going to finish mm -hmm. it easy pretty much. What's kind of when you see the team matchup, what's kind of going through your head before you head into the room? 
I didn't like their attitude. Um, going into every single game, I just try to have a positive mindset. I was like, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna get through this. So it was all like mental for me. And so when I saw line one, I was like, it's okay. I was like, we got this, it's fine. And I was like, it's can be, like, just like in the game, it came down to strategy rather than just like, you know, a bunch of jack dudes. So I was like, you know what, as long as we're strategic, like we can still win. And, but then when we were, you know, getting out to go play the game and we walked out both of the lines, I look at like everyone else in all the lines and they're like waving me, like they're never going to see me again. They're like, oh, like, <laughs> food. and I was like, oh, I was like, this is awful energy right now. So, I mean, when people were making, like people were like frowning their face at me, like they were going to cry. I was like, I was like, no, I'm going to come back. But I mean, at that point, then I got a little worried because I'm like, damn, no one believes in our line compared to line one. And I line one was stacked or huge. So, um, I mean, luckily it, it didn't end up being tug of war. But yeah, I was a little scared towards the end when we were about to walk in. I was like, oh, crap, maybe I am screwed. But yeah. hey, that's the nature of the game. Sometimes you just got to walk in and kind of figure out what's going to happen. So when you do walk in and you see this giant setup of battleship what what's your initial thoughts my initial thought was like oh thank god it was like a relief like just a weight lifted off my chest i was like okay we're not playing tug of war i'm like i'd rather play warships than tug of war against team one and so when i saw that i was like word and then when we picked captains and brad ended up being captain i'm like oh i'm like he's got my back like we're we're gucci and yeah so i, I was really excited once i saw those warships but now maybe i wish it was a little tug of war instead but i don't know i don't know so why did you guys decide to put brad as your captain um well brad was saying he's like i play this game all the time and i know he's extremely smart he's very intelligent so i was like you know what um warships does come down to strategy so i was like brad is the smartest person here in my opinion i didn't I didn't know like some of the other people and like what their strengths were, but he was, you know, raising his hand saying like, he plays this, he knows the strategy behind it. So I was like, oh, I was like, Brad has it hands down. We pretty, it was pretty much unanimous that we all wanted Brad to be captain. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely take the reins and here you go. Yeah. So when you're putting your ships together, why do you decide to get in the five person boat? I didn't, I did not choose this. What they don't show in the game is that the lieutenant and the captain, they chose where you sat in the boat. I was trying to sit in the two person boat, but by the time, I mean, Brad had his boys, um, Charlie and Rob with him. So obviously he's gonna put them in like the best boats, whatever. Okay, I don't blame you, but like I'm next in line. Like I thought he called me sis, he was my bro. And I'm like, come on, help me out. And so when the time I went over to him and I was like, I was like, can you put me in a better boat? And then the lieutenant, he was like, he's like, just go in the four person boat. And I was like, eh, oh, and then I looked behind me and all the boats, all the boats were filled pretty much. It was just the four person boat. And I was like, it wasn't even worth to fight it because no one was going to move from their little two or three person boat to the four person. So I was like, well, this is my fate, but I still just try to have a good attitude. And I'm like, you know what? I was like, you never know what can happen. So I was like, let's, let's just see how it goes. And yeah. Hey, you only can do what you can do. I guess the next, you know, if you could go back, you would just kind of pick your boat, not say nothing like, all right, I'm here in this boat. I'm not moving. And then that kind of things kind of, you had to be selfish in that moment. So, yeah, I, I wish I was selfish, <laughs> but it is what it is. But then again, it, you know, the five person boat is longer to sink and the two person boat, you know, if you hit one, you're going to hit the next yeah. real quick. So it's a catch 22. It's not really, you know, it's, it's hard to yeah. decide, figure which one is better and which one's worse. For in sure. this particular game um mm -hmm. well that happens and then uh so when the game the captain was fire missile of the team we know the rules and you're playing against the one of the main players uh brighton 432 and the other team uh you don't know this clearly at the time so i won't dive too deep into that because we're all just the same at this point before the edit mm -hmm. comes out so this game lasts the longest on our tv screens this is the featured mm -hmm. game of battleship and so the missiles are shooting they're missing they're missing and the first missile hits and i believe that is not your boat yes it is your boat it yeah no, it was our boat yeah it is your it is your boat your boat is the first one that is hit and so when your boat gets hit for the first time what's kind of what are you feeling 
I was, my heart like went into my stomach and I was like, oh no. And you know, I was like, you know what? I just kept thinking to myself, I'm like, it's not over yet. I'm like, we could hit like a two person bow right off the jump. They could try and hit other um, coordinates and they could still miss. So I'm like, there's still hope. But once I saw that first hit, I was like, I don't know. Like I didn't have a good feeling about it, but I, I kept trying to be positive. But in the back of my mind, I was like, we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other team, your team actually sinks their boat first. Mm -hmm. uh, 68, 41, 422, 447, and 542 are out of here. Mm -hmm. But yours is quickly right after that because, you know, it's, it's, it's already been hit, so they know where to go now. And so when your boat gets sunk and you know you're out, what is what are you feeling? I feel just sadness. I'm like the life-changing money was just taken away from me and I, I think the hardest thing about it was that it was just a game based off of luck and i was like oh i had no control in the outcome like if i got out on dalgona i would have been okay with it because i was like okay i did it myself like my fate was in my own hands but since it was warships like i couldn't choose the ship i was on i couldn't choose the coordinates that were hit so i just kind of felt like a sitting duck and it was just really sad and then we just kind of had to sit there while the rest of the team played and um it was just really depressing like they don't they don't really show it on the screen but like i was crying i was like i was just so sad because i was like life-changing money is literally getting taken away from me and i i genuinely thought i had a good chance at winning the game if it was more based on like you know like athleticism or like you know less fair less luck based games so but i mean that's the name of the game it's squid game it's not going to be fair so it is what it is yeah no definitely there was a lot of right place right time moments in this game i mean you know line four and dalgana could have been a circle you know exactly. and then or you know anybody could have been voted out you know because mm -hmm. some person got voted out because they didn't know anybody somebody got voted out because they knew everybody so it, exactly it was it was kind of just like you had to find that right balance but also like a balance of luck too where mm -hmm. you had to get lucky and unfortunately you know you just you just had to be the sacrificial lamb for your boat and your team to get the victory. Yeah, but the worst part was, was my team won. And I was like, damn, I was like, my team won and I still have to go home. And it was just also sad that they all got to like celebrate in front of us and we're all like crying and they're like, all like, whoa, like we made it and jumping up and down and hugging each other. And I'm like, Ugh. I was like, this sucks. But uh, I mean, I, I had friends on the team, so I was happy that they still had a chance at winning the money. But I mean, selfishly, I'm like, no, I was like, that could have been me, like all my money. But it's the name of the game. This is what we signed up for. It's not fair game, squid game. So, I mean, whatever. <laughs> hey, I mean, that's, that's tough. You know, everybody happy around you and you're just the one sour sap. Oh, yeah. God. That's a, time. yeah, because I, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, and then you could see it kind of on your face when watching watching the show where you just like, oh, I was pissed. I realized watching the show, I was like, I have major RBF. Like, I <laughs> every little second that I was showing on the screen for like the short seconds that it was, my face looked pissed every single day, and I was like, I really need to like fix my face. I was like, why do I look pissed all the time? But in that moment, I was definitely it was uh, warranted. So. Yeah, I was definitely upset in that moment. No, oh, and oh, you know, you you should be, you know, or else, mm -hmm. you know, if you weren't upset, then why were you even there? Exactly. But some people were ready to go home at that point, anyways. However, so we continue. You know, you're sadly eliminated. It's time for four, three, four to be voted off the island of <laughs> squids, and mm -hmm. you get back to the hotel. And so when you get back to when you're headed back to the states and you finally get home, what's kind of what's what what emotions are you feeling when you get back? Uh, honestly, it was, I was like depressed for a little bit, like not even gonna lie. It was really hard. I feel like just being in that environment, it was so crazy. You're talking to people 24 seven. It was this amazing opportunity that you got to be a part of. And then it, when I got home, I was like, oh, I was like, it's just back to reality, like back to work. You couldn't talk about the show with anyone. So I think the fact that we had, we have like a squid game group chat with everyone. I feel like that helped a lot because you had people to talk to about the game. And even like when we got back to ho the hotel, we were all like talking about our experience, but it was really hard being back home. I was like, I have to act like this just didn't happen for a whole year pretty much until the show comes out. 
and it was hard getting adjusted back to life not just like mentally but also like eating real food again and just like trying to train my body to have like real food and just making sure like I hit the gym and stuff so it, it was hard getting acclimated for like a, a good like month or two honestly but it was sad yeah no yeah no definitely difficult I mean it was it's a kind of an experience that you know nobody else around you have went through and it was all filmed and then you know you're just alone you're with everyone and then you're alone it's a very yeah. drastic change and your endorphins are super high and then they're just gone so i don't even i mean i was feeling depressed too i mean luckily i live in new york city to where several other ones lived and so we got to meet up very soon after we were yeah. uh, eliminated and that helped a lot just because you know that the, ther the therapists they they were there for us to talk to and whatnot and, mm -hmm. but they didn't need to experience it and so when they're talking to you it's a little bit like they don't understand where you're coming from completely exactly Just, that was my point of view not everyone might feel that way but that's how kind of i felt mm -hmm. and so it was you know it was uh therapeutic to be able to speak to other people and kind of just get it out because there's all these little things and like this is your story and you're feeling like man i went through all this and you kind of went through a similar thing but you understand where i'm coming from rather than anyone else so 100 exactly. agree with you. yeah that's why I'm, I'm so grateful for the shows because I met so many people and like, I have so many friends now from across the fucking country. So being able to, when I got home and just talk to, I was literally talking to people like every single day for like weeks and just like venting. And then just like, just talking about our experience and like, it helped so much being able to, you know, talk with other people that actually knew what we were going through because we, we couldn't tell our friends in real life, couldn't tell anyone that we went through this and they wouldn't really understand anyways. So it was nice. It was a nice way to decompress just chatting with everyone so yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. even as crazy as that you know the group chat can be sometimes it's still the, the group chat is getting spicy there's more drama in the <laughs> group chat than on the show <laughs> oh. i know right it's it's it's, it's a it's a treat it's kind of nice uh, I'm, not lie. I'm like as long I as i'm not just... involved I think we need to like propose to like Netflix or Studio Lambert, like everyone in this group chat should be on this show, <laughs> next show. And it's yeah. like, you know, we'll duke it out there and kind of like put everything out there. You know, I think that would be great television. I think good. Know? We need to see that. Cause I'm like, I woke up and I'm seeing all this drama on my phone. I'm like, where was this energy like in the show? I was like, this would have made for great TV. But I mean, yeah, the group chat's getting crazy, but. I keep saying they should have put some liquor and some fruit up in that Squid Games compound, man. It would have got spicy real quick. We I mean, nothing to do. It would have gotten spicy real fast. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe if they do a season two. Maybe. Let's hope the season two that actually is like the real Squid Games. They actually have something stuff like that. So if any if anybody comes back, if there's a season two, the challenge, then you know you might have that. But we'll see. I think mm -hmm. it's a fine balance of replicating the show and then making it original itself. Uh, that's why that was my big concern coming in. I'm like, they can't make it exactly like the show. There's no way. Like they have yeah. to switch something up because it's a TV show at the end of the day. And I was just wondering where they would get that drama from because this type of show isn't a type of show where you it's good to start drama and it's good to be the bad guy. It's not good at all. Like unless you yeah. just care about getting TV time. But and I think they didn't expect that though, because in the show, I feel like a lot of us were like all getting along. Like there were definitely fights and arguments and stuff that weren't shown, but for the most part, I feel like everyone like got along with each other. And I think they were like, can you guys like fight or something? They didn't expect everyone to like really like each other. But I mean, there definitely were some people that people weren't a fan of, but for the most part, a lot of us liked each other. And I think they were waiting to see all those like fights and drama and stuff, but they should have shown some things, but I guess, at the end, there's only 10 episodes that they can film, all, show all this content on. So I get it, but there was some behind the scene things for sure. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. So it was, it was getting, it was getting deep in there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, um, you know, you back, you get all that stuff out. So is there anything that, you know, I, I, I hate when people say, is there anything you would have done different? It's like, well, I, I don't want to live in the past. So I don't really ask that question, but I will say is, if you had a second go around, what would you do differently in the future? 
I think, honestly, I wouldn't do much differently. I think it would just come down to warships, obviously. Like, I wish I either got placed in a different boat or I wish I could have been captain or lieutenant. I feel like that would have been cool. That way the fate was kind of more in my own hands rather than just like being a sitting duck. So, I mean, at the end of the day, I guess it just wasn't my time. It wasn't my time for that four milli, but yeah, I guess it would, it would just go back to that warships game. I feel like everything with like red light, green light, Dalgona, socializing and stuff, it was all good, but yeah. And also I think I was, they obviously don't show this, but I was like really sick the rest of like day three that I was in there and I was miserable. Like I was bedridden for a couple days and like, so I couldn't talk to a lot of people. So I wish I wasn't sick during that time so I could kind of form some more bonds and stuff, but yeah, it was pretty brutal because I'm like, we had no nutrition. There was no way of me getting like healthy again. So that part sucked too. Yeah, I mean, being sick in there was not the way to go. Not that it was your mm -hmm. fault, but it just, yeah. you have to it talk to people fun. and you're just like not feeling it. It's tough. Yeah, my social battery was like drained 90% of the time. But I was like, no, I'm like, this is a game. This is like a once in a lifetime thing. So I kind of like suck it up. But I mean, I was, my energy was like so down. So I wish I, wasn't sick during that for sure yeah well is there anything that you you know haven't said yet that you want to say any particular instances of players you know you and not you're not seeing eye to eye or anything that you kind of want to let get out there so the people know what's what's going on you know a final thoughts on the game itself in regards to you in regards to me i mean i a lot of things weren't, I mean, some things happened before the game even started. Um, I don't really want to name names because I'm not trying to, it's it's over with or whatever. But even before the game started, I had a little beef with a girl. Um, she said to me, because I had braids in while we were filming, and she was like, why are you wearing braids? Like, are you even black? And I was like, mm. I was like, yes. And she's like, where's your dad from? Where? And I was like, uh, Alabama. And she was like, well, where's your dad's dad's family from? Like trying to like question like what our ethnicity was and everything like that. I'm like, girl, I'm like, you think I'd be wearing braids if I wasn't black? And so in the game, I was not a fan of her. And she told someone else that she was gonna like apologize for saying that to me. And she never did say that. She never apologized. And she kind of just like slid in my DMs asking, I mean, talking like nothing happened. But so I wasn't a fan of her in the game, honestly. Um, we don't talk about her, but... I mean, she, she's tried to be nice to me, but I never got an apology. So I'm like, I don't want to be friends with someone like that, especially if you're not going to apologize. <laughs> so that, that was weird. It's too late to apologize. <laughs> it is. It's way too late. That was right before uh, Red Light, Green Light. So yeah, the whole time in the game. And I would see her. She would sometimes try to, to like come up and talk to me. Um, and I'd just be like, eh. But I mean, there was one point in the game where when I got really, really sick, like it was to the point where I was just like crying. Cause I was like, oh, I feel so miserable. Like this sucks. Like I don't want to be here. And she, she came out, she saw me crying and she like came over and gave me a hug, which is nice. Like when you see someone upset, like it's nice to do that. But I was great. I was appreciative of her for that. But other than that, I, we weren't friends in the game. So yeah. Uh, yeah, she probably felt embarrassed about it after it happened and she just didn't, she's one of, you know, she probably wants people who just doesn't know how to bring it up again without her feeling awkward. And at the end, in those points, I think you got to disregard your feelings. You deserve to feel awkward. You deserve to be in that bad place for putting mm -hmm. somebody else in that place. And so you got to be the bigger person, not even the bigger person. You just got to be the person to go up and apologize and own up to it. You know, it's called being responsible for your own actions. So. Yeah, it's, just a, weird, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's just a weird thing to like comment on to someone too. Yeah, like, I don't be going up to people and saying that, and like questioning your ethnicity or nationality, whatever you are. Like, let's all just let's just talk. And it was so out of pocket too. It was just not relevant to the conversation at all. So it was weird. You know how but, some people get? They just in their own little world. I know, for real. We just but wait. I have a question. Have you had any guests come on here talk about the condom situation? Uh, we had a little bit, yeah, last guest, but go ahead and elaborate on that for the guests who haven't seen those episodes. Well, I just want people to know, because you guys don't know how down bad we actually were in here the first three days, because we couldn't bring 
skincare, makeup, phone, literally we couldn't bring anything from the outside world except for just medication that kept you alive. So I'm, I'm literally addicted to chapstick. Like I have one in my car, on my nightstand, in my purse. Like I have one on me at all times. And if I don't and I'm out, I go and buy one if I don't have one on me. Like it's so bad. So going into the game, that's what I was most like scared of, honestly. I'm like, how am I going to survive without chapstick? So it was so bad that people, they supplied us with condoms and, you know, in case people wanted to get a little freaky. But I mean, I don't know who would have wanted did that in these conditions that we were living in. But we decided to just use them as condoms and people were like using the lube in the condoms putting on their lips and i remember i went to go get one because i saw everyone doing it i was like i want some and so i went to go to the drawer that had the condoms and they were all gone i'm like damn like everyone's using them and then i went up to one of my friends and i was like do you i was like oh all the condoms are gone like i want a chapstick and she's like oh girl i got you and she like took one out of her pocket and it was like half used. she's like i have a little bit left so i'm like scraping it but yeah, that's in case people didn't know, that's that's how Ooh. down that down. <laughs> it was Ooh, awful. And, but you should have seen people's lips. They were like swollen, cracked, bleeding. It was so bad. People were going to like medical to try and get something to fix it. It it was awful. So after day three, they finally gave us chapstick or Vaseline. And I was like, thank you, baby Jesus. So it was nice that they supplied it with us. But it was hard. It was rough in these yeah. streets. Yeah, I mean, I'm shown licking my lips before we're about to do the dang pick the cookies, and I'm like, <laughs> it's 24 seven, just licking lips. But it was hard. Yeah. But what a crazy experience! Because got to meet so many cool people. Got to hang out in Miami with DeAndre, so that was fun. Gang, gang. Yeah, lit. More good times to come. Can't wait yeah. for it. Uh, mm -hmm. this, yeah, this experience was amazing. I love being able to meet you. I know we've only brief, spoke a little bit in the game, but definitely met during the game and, uh, yeah. you know, became better friends outside after the game, which I love, you know, it's mm -hmm. you no know, better, better than ever. And, you know, you're a great person. You're super strong, beautiful, and just keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, I think, you know, the Squid Games is only the beginning for what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish and just keep using this is a stepping stone to kind of, you know, make your mark and what you're trying to do, you know? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I see you doing big things out here, DeAndre. I see you being so successful. So <sighs> this is just the beginning for you, too. I'm trying. I'm trying. So for the people who don't or people who want to know, I guess, where can they follow you or find you on social media? Yes, you can find me at Bree Dots, B R I D O T Z, on Instagram or Brief Favorite Things on TikTok. Those are like TikTok's more my platform because I like talking. So we posted a bunch of random TikToks on there. Okay, we'll get on the TikTok, y'all. You heard it first from the yeah. horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. But that's the end of this episode with Bree Dots and Player 343 checking out. She did amazing in the game. She got kind of screwed over, but hey. They had to screw you at the game because then you would have won the money. So exactly. That's right. That's right. I like that attitude. Exactly. <laughs> but till next time, y'all. Peace All and right. blessings. Thank you.